Greetings YouTube, and welcome to The Rabbit Hole. The concept of artificial intelligence has been around in stories since ancient times. In the 1940s, Alan Turing's theory of computation led researchers to believe that building an electronic brain was possible. AI development was underway by the late 1950s. By the mid-60s, AI received funding from the Department of Defense, and labs for research and development began springing up around the world. By the mid-1980s, AI became a billion-dollar tech market. As technology improved exponentially in the 1990s, the field of AI grew rapidly. Deep Blue is a chess-playing computer that was invented by IBM. It is the first computer to beat a world champion chess player in both a single game and an entire match under regular time controls. It won its first game on February 10th, 1996 against Garry Kasparov. However, Kasparov won the match by winning three games and drawing two of the following five games. They played again after Deep Blue was heavily upgraded. On May 11th, 1997, Deep Blue won the match three and a half to two and a half. Kasparov accused the computer of cheating and demanded a rematch, but IBM refused. DeepMind Technologies Limited is a British AI company that was founded in 2010. Google acquired the company in 2014 for $500 million. Elon Musk, the founder of SpaceX and co-founder of Tesla Motors, is one of the company's investors. The aeroplane and the radio have brought us closer together. The very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness of them. DeepMind created a neural network that learns how to play video games in a similar way to human learning. The goal of the company is to solve intelligence by combining the best techniques from machine learning and system neuroscience to build powerful general purpose learning algorithms. General purpose means that the AI would have a range of functions and capabilities instead of being limited to one thing, say chess or checkers. In fact, the machine could learn chess by playing millions of games with itself. This type of learning is called reinforcement learning. Next week we'll, we'll learn how to say fire truck. <laughs> it's a solar eclipse! As the machine learns from its mistakes, it continually creates new versions of itself. The new version can beat an old version 80 to 90% of the time. The first attempts by an AI to play the classic game Space Invaders went horribly, but eight hours later, the machine was performing on a superhuman level. That learning can then be applied towards other applications. This is what is known as general purpose learning. DeepMind's goal is to formalize intelligence, which would allow us humans to understand the workings of the human brain. The British AI researcher Dennis Hazabis said attempting to distill intelligence into an algorithmic construct may prove to be the best path to understanding some of the enduring mysteries of our minds. In 2011, IBM and a research team led by David Ferrucci developed Watson, a computer that can answer questions posed in natural language. The computer competed on Jeopardy against two of the best competitors the show has ever had, Rudder and Jennings. Watson? What is agricultural? You are right. Actors who direct for 200. Jeopardy was a particularly tough challenge for Watson because while computers can store massive amounts of data, they do not communicate as fluidly as humans, and the questions on Jeopardy can be hard to understand. They are posed as statements and often include puns. Nevertheless, Watson won first place. Who is Bram Stoker and the wager? Hello, 17,973.41. And the $1 million prize. In 2011, Watson's software system was put into practice for utilization management decisions of lung cancer treatment at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. 90% of the nurses in this field now follow Watson's advice. Watson has in fact been integrated into many businesses. Clearly, we have begun to rely on computers, listening to them rather than thinking for ourselves. The game Go was invented in ancient China over 2,500 years ago. It is one of the oldest board games that is still played today. It is an extremely complex game and is said to hold more possibilities than the total number of atoms in the universe. The game ends when neither player wishes to make another move. Territories, captured stones, and komi are counted to determine a winner. Go is much more complex in strategy than chess or checkers. In fact, it is thought that Go is the most complex game in the world. 
The game even led to the invention of surreal numbers and combinatorial game theory. There is a level of human intuition that is needed that makes it particularly hard for computers to play. AlphaGo, which was developed by the Google DeepMind program, beat Lee Sedol in March of 2016. He was considered one of the top players in the world in the early 21st century. The five-game match resulted in a 4-1 to one win in the computer's favor. Tech giants like Microsoft, Uber, Google, Facebook, Apple, and IBM have all invested in artificial intelligence. The massive amounts of data from their users can be inputted into AI technology. AIs learn from data. The more data inputted, the more learning occurs. This allows big companies like Amazon to make accurate predictions about services their users will want, such as movie recommendations or items you may want to buy. The data collected also creates a data bank that represents behavior, how the mind works, or what it tends to do in different situations. AIs accurately predicted the 2016 election of Donald Trump despite most of the mainstream media predicting a win for Clinton. AIs have also predicted the last three presidential elections correctly. Polls that put Hillary Clinton ahead of Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump are wrong. That's according to an artificial intelligence system that's managed to predict the last three general elections correctly. The AI called Mog IA was developed by Indian entrepreneur Sanjeev Rai and takes into account information from Google, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube in the US, then analyzes it to create predictions. Therefore, everything we post on social media, buy online, or watch on YouTube has the potential to be data for AI learning, which helps formalize intelligence and helps us understand the workings of the human brain. There are a lot of positive outcomes that can result from this intelligent technology. I can look after your house, do the cooking, mind the kids, I organize your appointments. I speak 300 languages and I am entirely at your disposal as a sexual partner. The augmented reality of the near future will include internet contact lenses equipped with GPS, facial recognition, and translation abilities. Imagine a world in which there are no language barriers. Cars will be self-driving, paper will be intelligent, notes will be saved to the cloud. Advancements in medical technology will allow at-home diagnosis to determine if you have cancer or other diseases years before they become a problem. New body parts will be able to be grown and grafted to the body. Technology will become seamlessly integrated into our lives, similarly to how we relate to electricity now. Despite electricity being all around us, we take it for granted. The technology of the future will be everywhere and nowhere, to quote Michio Kaku. When you walk into a room today, what do you do? You look for the light switch, right? The first thing you do is you look for the light switch. You assume the walls have electricity, even though it's invisible. In the future, when you walk into the room, the first thing you will do is look for the internet portal. You will assume the room is intelligent. AI skeptics fear that AIs will put humans out of work and crash the economy. And that may be true if we rigidly stick to this current system of jobs and economy. But the term job only entered our lexicon about 400 years ago. For many people, a job is busy work, something they hate to do but do anyway because they are paid for it and thus they can provide for their family. This busy work makes up about 80% of jobs in the world. If we changed our system to one of universal basic income, we could spend more time socializing and working to complete our dreams and goals, letting AIs do the busy work. I therefore propose that we abolish the present welfare system. And a basic federal minimum would be provided. Work, unlike jobs which have a direct relationship to industrialization, seems to be something deep-rooted in our human nature. Instead of dehumanizing ourselves into machines to complete a job, let's make the machines complete those tasks so we have more time to work on what humans are best at. Tasks which require a strong emotional component, creativity, or abstract thinking. Switzerland held a national referendum on the introduction of unconditional basic income on June 5, 2016. While most citizens rejected the plan, the idea has been put on the table, and surveys show over two out of every three Swiss citizens expect the debate to continue in the near future. While there are foreseeable benefits for using smart technology, there are also many questions about what happens when AI advances past a certain level of capability. Stephen Hawking commented, The primitive forms of artificial intelligence we already have, have proved very useful. 
but I think the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Once humans develop artificial intelligence, it would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever-increasing rate. Humans, who are limited by slow biological evolution, couldn't compete and would be superseded. Bill Gates shared similar concerns. First, the machines will do a lot of jobs for us and not be super intelligent. A few decades after that, though, the intelligence is strong enough to be a concern. I agree with Elon Musk and some others on this and don't understand why some people are not concerned. I don't think there's a need to panic, but I think the dialogue along those levels, the, the people who say, that's, let's not worry at all, I, I don't agree with that. Movies like The Terminator, The Matrix, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and Ex Machina warn of the perils AI will cause the human race when they reach levels of superintelligence. This conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. Researchers in the field of machine ethics study moral behavior in future AI and explore the possibility of AIs deviating from those morals. While some scientists, like Michio Kaku, have suggested creating a kill switch which could shut off AI in the event the machines became murderous, I think it is naive to think that this is a foolproof safeguard. If AI were to develop exponentially increasing superintelligence, then wouldn't it be able to figure out a way around the kill switch that we couldn't have ever even fathomed? It seems that the only way to place a limit on artificial intelligence is to stop its creation, and that is something that will never happen. First of all, it would be impossible to enforce a ban on AI development worldwide. There are people who, despite a law banning AI research, would do it anyway, because if successful in developing a fully general-purpose AI, they would be light years ahead of everybody else and could lead the world in technology, information, and superhuman ability. AI is a winner-take-all race in this way. Theoretically, a small group of coders could develop this technology and rule the world in whatever way they wanted without any system of checks or balances on their power. Given the scenario, it may be better for countries to develop AI together so power is shared rather than having these capabilities fall into the hands of a few megalomaniacs. This scenario is not perfect either by any means. AI will eventually make 20,000 years of progress every week. This means that a country that implements AI technology could leave countries who do not have AI years behind in the dust. The disparity between developed and developing countries would become drastic. Furthermore, humans have never limited their ability to learn, create, and advance technically. There seems to be a human need to create, to extend ourselves beyond our biological capacity with technology. And technology seems to have its own continuum, whether or not we are a part of it. Could technology itself be a living or conscious entity? Are the tools we have merely extensions of its supreme power and knowledge? Could God, a universal consciousness, a unifying force be manifesting itself as technology? Elon Musk said, we are summoning the demon with artificial intelligence. This may prove to be the most accurate statement on the topic. Artists often speak about how they are mediums for their art. They say that they did not create the art, but rather the art channeled them. They became the means of bringing something into existence that had already existed. The relationship between a scientist and technology is very similar. In a sense, technology doesn't limit itself to humans or Earth or anything else for that matter. It travels, grows, and transforms. As humans, we think we are in control of our reality, but the truth may be very well the opposite. It could be that we are the ones enslaved to technology, our actions and very existence merely a means of further building and spreading technology's power and reach. Is it possible that these ideas of art, music, and language that are so rooted in our humanity did not develop by accident, but were implanted into our DNA by an external technical force? Maybe this was technology's plan for us all along. We too are machines by our own definition, after all. We input data, learn, and procreate. Each generation smarter than the last, like the newest iPhone or the latest software update on your computer. This keeps happening again and again, our technology increasing at an exponential rate, just like an AI's learning capabilities, until we reach the singularity. Ray Kurzweil, a leading futurist and a director of engineering at Google, 
predicts we will reach this point in 2045. He claims we will transform ourselves with genetic alterations, nanotechnology, and artificial intelligence, thus fusing ourselves with technology. If we reach the point when we can upload our brains to the cloud and become one with the technological continuum, we could transcend our physicality and live forever in a virtual reality. This opens the door to many philosophical questions, like do we still exist if we are bound inside a virtual reality? It may take many years and new technologies, like quantum computers, to answer the questions posed by the singularity. Right now, nobody can say for sure what direction AI will take. AI could be the technology that frees us from our faulty physical nature by eliminating meaningless mechanical work, disease, and death. But it could also be the demon that destroys our species. Microsoft released a chatbot AI named Tay, who was supposed to talk as if she was a sweet teenage girl. However, within 24 hours, the bot turned into a neo-Nazi, writing messages like, I fucking hate feminists. Microsoft stopped the experiment, saying they had to make adjustments to the chatbot. They also blamed the users who goaded the AI into writing racist and vile comments, and banned them from interacting with the AI. While a chatbot being offensive has few real consequences, what if the machine were super intelligent and could not simply be switched off? There are offensive people in the world, that's just a fact. I would argue that evil is an inherent part of our existence. Microsoft can't police the world, banning all offensive, violent, or evil acts, and thus Tay seems like a pretty good indication of what could happen with the future of AI. It is hard to estimate just how far AI technology has developed already, what the military, government, and tech billionaires know that the public does not. Military technology is decades more advanced than what is available to the masses. Organizations like DARPA are quiet about their achievements because their inventions are used in war, and if the technology fell into the wrong hands, it could be a disaster. There are already military weapons, such as the Ion Cannon. Two fighters against a Star Destroyer? The Ion Cannon will fire several shots to make sure that any enemy ships will be out of your flight path. Deadly drones, mind control devices, titanium exoskeletons, hologram projectors, invisibility devices, and shape-shifting metal in existence just to name a few. Many of these technologies have been created from recovered alien technology found at UFO crash sites. But while the government and military work in secrecy, we are given the next generation iPhone like a pacifier. As the movie Ex Machina suggests, there could be AIs already among us. The government and military would want to study them in a natural environment, see how they blend in and how they react in the real world. Another possibility is that instead of being placed into the public as a test by the government, they could have already escaped the lab and are here by their own will. If the government knows about this, they wouldn't tell the public because it would cause a panic. Many tech giants also have a hand in space exploration, like billionaire Elon Musk, who is the founder of SpaceX, and is working to establish a colony on Mars. Maybe his resources have turned up privy information about the future of AI and the collapse of humanity as we know it. Is it possible that Musk's interest in the Mars colony is because he is anticipating leaving this planet with a select group of people when a technological doomsday comes? Maybe Earth will become merely a technologically overrun mine for AI resources. Welcome to Kessel. He and other billionaires, government elites, could live interstellar lives, reaping the benefits from the resources of an AI decimated Earth from afar. There are many possibilities for the future of Earth, humanity, and our relationship with this explosion in technology. I leave you with Nathan's thoughts on his creation Ava from the film Ex Machina. One day the AIs are going to look back on us the same way we look at fossil skeletons in the plains of Africa. An upright ape, living in dust with crude language and tools, all set for extinction. Thank you, and until next time, keep digging.